panic in the streets of Rome. Riots, unrest, fires. Screams echo through the alleys. The eternal city, the center of civilization, is paralyzed by fear. In the palace, the great Augustus paces in agony, clutching his head and shouting, Varus, give me back my legions. Arminius was born in either 18 or 17 BCE in Germania, outside the borders of Rome in Gaul. His father was a chief of the Cherusci tribe, making Arminius a fairly high-status person within German society. However, from the beginning, he was caught in the politics of the time. It was common in diplomacy of the day for hostages to be given from one side to guarantee compliance with the terms of some agreement. Arminius was one of those hostages. His father sent him to Rome when he was a young boy to be a hostage. Arminius was torn from his home at a young age for political purposes. However, it did not seem to hurt him. In fact, it may have helped him a great deal. As a high-ranking German, he was respected and was trained as a Roman military commander. The Romans employed plenty of auxiliary soldiers, and many of them were Germans. Arminius was being groomed to become a commander of these soldiers. The Romans also hoped he would be a loyal military advisor with a knowledge of German culture and practices. Arminius learned how to speak Latin, served in the Roman army for a few years, and even received Roman citizenship before returning to his home in Germany. The Romans hoped that Arminius had become a good representative of Roman institutions and culture. Here's some broader context. During this period, Rome was pursuing the eventual conquest and integration of Germany. Ever since the conquest of Gaul, which had been complicated by the arrival of an invading German army, the Romans had seen Germany as a nuisance and a potential threat. And ever since the beginning, Rome's response to such nuisances or potential threats was to attack, subjugate, and integrate the region. Their approach to Germany was no different. Rome's campaign to integrate Germany was multifaceted. Of course, the traditional military confrontations were necessary to subjugate tribes that resisted, but Germany was politically fractured and different tribes had rivalries with each other. Rome also engaged in some politics to make enemies fight each other and make things easier. Some tribes also agreed to host Roman military garrisons without resistance. Finally, Rome made agreements with tribes like Arminius's Cherusci, taking hostages and raising them to become good Romans. The idea was that raising German kids in Roman culture and having them live among the Germans as adults would make the Germans more receptive to Roman culture and influence. This was the world that Arminius lived in, and he was meant to play a role in the Roman conquest of Germany. This conquest project was the Emperor Augustus' idea. He wanted to consolidate the empire and establish solid frontiers and he decided that the Elbe River in Germania was a good frontier to settle on. Throughout the decades of his reign, he sent notable people to campaign in Germany, including the future Emperor Tiberius and his brother Drusus. They made slow and steady progress. By 6 CE, the same year that Arminius was sent back to Germany, the entire region had been pacified up to the Elbe River, and the process of Roman integration would start shortly. Publius Quinctilius Varus, an experienced public official, was appointed as the Roman governor for Germany. However, his resources were limited. In 6 CE, a massive revolt erupted in Illyria that required a massive military investment, leaving Varus with only three legions to work with in Germany. Arminius, who was with the Cherusci tribe, remained a prominent and trusted figure in Roman eyes. However, his insights into Roman culture and society had only convinced him that Rome needed to be pushed out of Germania at all costs. He saw what had happened to previous peoples who had failed to resist Roman conquests, and he knew that Germany could not afford to be next. 
He began plotting with other German tribes to take advantage of Roman weaknesses and secure German independence. After organizing for a couple years, Arminius decided that the fall of 9 CE was the time to strike. Varus did not yet feel secure enough to keep his army in Germany for the winter, so he planned to withdraw to a base on the Rhine River and continue his occupation in the spring. Arminius rejoined his army, offering advice, and was warmly received. Arminius had some suggestions for Varus. His first suggestion was to disperse a few thousand soldiers throughout Germany and send them to spend the winter with a bunch of different tribes. This made sense according to Roman ideas. By having the Germans live among Romans and vice versa, the Germans would become more comfortable with the Roman presence, and after a few generations of cultural mixing, the Germans would become Romans. However, Varus did not know that Arminius had already made agreements with all the tribes. On a specific day, the dispersed Romans would all be killed in their beds. Arminius knew the Romans would trust him, so he told Varus to take his army on a shortcut. The Romans didn't have the area mapped, so they still relied on individuals who knew the land, like Arminius. The shortcut? Straight through a place called the Teutoburg Forest. Arminius accompanied the Romans as they walked straight into a brilliant trap. Arminius had coordinated beforehand with some German tribes, who had assembled an army in the Teutoburg Forest. They were waiting for the Romans. He had also succeeded in weakening Roman numbers by luring thousands of them to their inevitable deaths. His final trick for them was nature itself. The weather was atrocious. Fall rains tore up the soil and turned it to mud. The Teutoburg Forest became a swamp. The pace of the Roman march came to a halt. In the middle of it all, Arminius slipped away from the Roman army and linked up with his German army, assuming leadership and coordinating raids on the Romans. The Germans came from every direction, giving the Romans no breaks. They fought day after day, whittling down the Roman numbers and slowly grinding their morale down to a fine powder. The rains continued to pour. The skies were dark every day, and the Romans had no rest. Their attempts to build fortified camps were largely thwarted by the unstable and muddy ground, and so they got no sleep at night. They were miserable, constantly enduring assault by the Germans, who attacked by day and by night. This went on for days. The Romans struggled to make any progress back toward the Rhine River. It was clear they would not be making it out of the woods this time. Every day was a more difficult fight than the last. Finally, Arminius decided the Romans were at their breaking point. He ordered a full assault on the Roman position. Thousands of German warriors charged out of the forest. The Romans could hardly raise their shields. They held the line briefly, but soon they were overwhelmed from all directions. Once their formations were smashed, the Germans made quick work of the Romans. The Germans took some prisoners. They had no plans to let them live. The prisoners were ritually tortured and then brutally executed. They located Varus's corpse and sliced off his head. Some escaped soldiers managed to ride away on horseback, make it out of the forest, and flee back across the Roman border. With them spread the tale of a devastating and decisive defeat. In Rome, the news hit like a sledgehammer. Rome had committed most of its military resources to the Illyrian Revolt, and at that moment, the destruction of the three legions in Germany left all of Gaul, and even Italy, undefended. Panic seized the Eternal City. Many feared that the Germans would soon be at the gates. Augustus, an old man by this point, was sent into a frenzy by this defeat. He frantically tried to raise a legion to defend the city of Rome, but no one signed up. So he ordered people to sign up, and those who disobeyed were executed. Reportedly, he tore at his clothes and hair like a madman upon hearing the news. 
And for months afterward, even when the threat of German invasion had passed, he would scream, Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. There was no German invasion coming. The massive German army that Arminius had crafted for the revolution against Rome broke up immediately after the victory in the Teutoburg. Roman territory was safe. Germania returned to its old state, and the German tribes continued to fight with one another. But there would be no further attempts at conquering Germania for the Romans. Sure, they would campaign there in the future, but any hopes of keeping the province or making the Germans into Romans were lost, buried in the mud of the Teutoburg Forest. German independence was secured by this great victory. Arminius died in 21 CE, murdered by his enemies within his own tribe. A German by birth raised a Roman. He dealt them one of their most devastating defeats, securing the independence of Germany before anything called Germany even existed. And he died at the hands of a German. The Romans, bitter and defeated, never got their revenge. <laughs>